Hey, Pathway. We're uh, glad that you found us here on the internet. Uh, as you very well know, there's a lot going on, and uh, so we're not able to meet physically anymore in our location. Uh, so that's why we brought you to YouTube, and we're glad you're there. If you have followed us from Facebook, and that's a great news. You probably have already liked our page. Uh, if you haven't already, we would ask you to just go back and uh, like us on Facebook. That way you can stay connected with us virtually uh, while we're during this time. Uh, but if you've found us, we're here on YouTube, you will also see that there is a spot that you can subscribe to. And we would love for you to subscribe so that you can as well stay up to date. Uh, things will get sent to your email and uh, to let you know that, hey, <laughs> we're doing church online. And uh, if you're with us today, uh, thank you. Uh, we're, our prayers are continuously with you. And uh, it's an exciting time, different time. Um, uh, we have a lot of introverts in our church, so I'm sure they're excited. Uh, but for those of us who like to be around people, this can be a difficult time. Uh, so what we're going to be doing this morning is uh, just trying to provide a opportunity for you to continue to grow. Um, if you're on Facebook right now, uh, come on over, follow us uh, on YouTube so that you can actually see uh, some of the comments. And if you are on Facebook, uh, put that you're here. Let us know that you're here or say, hey, whatever, that you're joining us, you're welcoming us. Uh, if you're on YouTube, uh, you should be able to maybe leave uh, some comments. Uh, we'd love for, to hear what your thoughts are and just to try to encourage you. Uh, but we have a few announcements as, uh, as we are a church, and so we want to keep you up to date. One of the first things we want to do is simply say, welcome. We're glad that you are here. Uh, Pathway is a place for you to belong. And if you found us, we hope that you continue to stay with us uh, during this journey. A few things that we need to uh, make pretty clear is because we can't meet physically, we do have to meet, or we would like to meet, <laughs> Uh, virtually. Uh, Kids Connection is what we typically do when we're meeting, but uh, what we're trying to do is send you some materials um, that you can watch the videos with your kids. Uh, there's a PDF for some of the different activities that you can do. All of this is right from the curriculum that we currently use called Superbook. Um, if you're looking for something different, if you're looking for a, uh, a full kids service, well, if you look in the details below, you will see some links uh, that a uh, church has done multiple things. Uh, so really, really cool things, uh, age appropriate, uh, that you can check those out and see that those have gone live on Sunday. The other thing that we have been able to do, last week when, when we met physically, we didn't know whether or not we could do this. Uh, but we've joined with Broadwood Community Church, which is uh, kind of a, a partner church of ours. This is where we meet on a Sunday morning. Um, and we're going to be Zooming, uh, using a, a product called Zoom. And uh, so we're going to Zoom everybody who wants to join us in. Uh, we're going to be continuing our study on the Book of Judges. And these, this is going to run every Monday night now uh, from 7 to 8 o'clock. Um, you'll be able to download a... Uh, participations guide and that will help you to understand what's going on and to simply follow along uh, but simply if, uh, if we get the link we'll send that to you an email there's also been uh, on our Facebook page you will see that we've updated the letter uh, that has all this information so we really truly want you to join us for that the other thing that we need to draw your attention to is how do you continue to give uh, giving is an opportunity that God allows us to enter in. He says that he'll, he'll pour out to us what we, then we give back to him. And then, then he turns around and, and multiplies it even more. So it's an incredible thing if you want to do a complete study. One, it's one of these things he says, test me on this. So in this time where we know the financial um, kind of destitute might come, that people are concerned, people are worried. Uh, this is a great way to continue to say, okay, God, I'm going to test you with what you've given me, and will you multiply it? So we've got a couple different opportunities. Uh, first, we've been doing this for quite some time. Simply go to Pathway Church Canada forward slash give, uh, and there you'll find a, a, a button that you could uh, click, and that'll take you directly to uh, a PayPal 
link and then you can use whichever version of PayPal you'd like to use. Uh, the other thing that we have just been able to do is accept EFTs or electronic transfers. Uh, this is simple, you do your own banking, go online, add, uh, go into your bank account and add financial at pathwaychurchcanada.com as a payee as such. Um, and then what will happen is that will get sent automatically to the bank. You don't need to worry about putting a password. We've taken care of that. Um, any money that does come in will go automatically to our general fund unless you put otherwise in the message. So if you haven't done that, that is what's going to happen. But uh, today we are continuing with the Deeper Life series. We're actually uh, wrapping up. If you've missed us, this is the last part in this segment. Uh, we've been looking at this for three weeks and uh, I got a quick video to show you uh, before we continue. One day, after he had preached a sermon on the second coming of Christ, A.B. Simpson was approached by a reporter who asked, Dr. Simpson, can you tell us exactly when Jesus Christ will return? Simpson replied, yes, and I will tell you if you promise to publish it exactly as I say it. When the reporter agreed, Simpson quoted Matthew 24, 14, for the gospel of the kingdom will be preached as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Taking the gospel to every man, woman, and child on the face of the earth has always been the driving force behind who we are as the Christian and Missionary Alliance. We passionately believe that when we finish the task that Jesus gave to the church, He will return. That is what distinguishes us from most other denominations. We really believe that when we take the gospel to the nations, we are at the same time bringing back the King. So we're going to continue today and kind of wrap up our four-point four series called uh, the Deeper Life, and if you're just joining us, uh, we have been walking through this series called The Deeper Life, and it's kind of got a, a couple different reasons we're doing this. One, to let everybody know uh, who attends Pathway on a regular basis that this is who we are as the Christian and Missionary Alliance Church. Uh, this is the denomination that we belong to, and so uh, a little bit of our history, a little bit of our, our doctrine uh, is kind of why we have done this series. And uh, right now, you're catching us on part four, uh, where we're going to look at the crown, which represents Jesus, our coming king. And so to just to catch everybody up a little quickly, I'm going to go through the, quickly the, uh, the first three that we've covered the last couple weeks. And uh, if this is your first time, if you want, you can go to Pathway Church Canada forward slash listen, and you'll be able to li uh, hear all three of our previously recorded ones. Uh, but this will give you an idea of, of who we are and where we're going um, as we wrap this up. First is the cross. And this seems pretty obvious, uh, but if it's not spoken, is it important? Uh, for us, it is. And that's why it is the first thing in our logo and the first thing we talked about. Um, so we look at it as Jesus as our Savior. And so uh, earlier I spoke about, well, do we even need a Savior? What's the point? Uh, very simply, if you go back to the garden, we believe that's where everything went to pot. And from this point on, we've needed a savior. Uh, if we look around, we see what the world looks like. And for, if we understand that, that the payment then was done on the cross. And then if the cross is where our payment was, then the restoration began at the empty tomb. And so then there has to be this decision not to just believe that Jesus walked the earth or he was a good teacher, but to believe that he can be your Lord. Then we looked at Jesus, our sanctifier, and it's this idea that we're not there yet. Uh, Jesus promised to, to come back and get us uh, and to take us to his father's house. So if you take a look around with the way things are going, it's kind of like bring us back now. But sanctification, Jesus as our sanctifier, is the process to get us ready. It's the process to help us become what he already declared us. Jesus de declared us justified. Just if I didn't sin. And so sanctify is this process of the Holy Spirit working in our lives, helping us to become more and more like Christ. 
to become who we've already been declared. And then we've looked last week at our healer. And we believe that Jesus is our healer. And so if sanctification is to our spiritual, then healer is really to the same to our physical. It's this idea of understanding that because we're not home yet, we can still call upon Jesus to heal, to restore. Sometimes he does it miraculously, and sometimes just by sustaining us. Uh, so Jesus is a healer. And again, any of these three, uh, we've went into a little deeper so uh, you can go ahead and listen to that online. But today we're coming to Jesus, our coming King. And uh, as a church, we believe in a virgin birth. But what's awesome is we also believe Jesus is coming back. And as his birth was something that kind of happened, um, it was almost quiet. When Jesus returned, it'll go unnoticed. Or won't go unnoticed really because you know that's what it says here in the notes and as I continue um, so we're going to be looking at Jesus our coming king and that is what we have this symbol the crown the crown represents him being our king but also that he is going to return and this is our first distinctive that we're going to look at or our last distinctive that we're going to look at and I got to be upfront and, and very clear that um, when I put a, a my, my teaching service together or, or at the beginning of the year um, I spend usually it's the summer uh, I spend time putting together what I'm going to speak on almost a year in advance and so this series that we're going through is a series that I decided we would do back in the summertime and so a couple weeks ago or last week sorry uh, we had this idea of hey this coronavirus thing is going crazy people are, are doing can, just the isolating themselves, hiding from anything and everything. And so what kind of a topic should I do as a preacher? Well, we're already doing Jesus is our healer. So to me, it made sense to continue. And so with that, we're moving on to Jesus is our coming king. Now, this isn't some doom and gloom kind of thing. I don't believe, necessarily believe Jesus is going to return tomorrow or, or at any time soon. I believe he'll come, but I don't know when. And so this... Uh, talk is not to scare you, but hopefully to make you think. And so in this notion, uh, as uh, Jesus being our healer, as this notion of Jesus being our coming king, I believe that we can see that he's always working to be that far ahead and he's bringing us here. So as we get going, I'm going to start with uh, the chorus of, uh, of a band. It was a band I, I liked quite a bit. I was able to see him live. I actually introduced him. A little bit of information. Got to introduce them once. Uh, Thousand Foot Crutch, or also known as TFK. Uh, but in one of their songs called um, The End is Where We Begin, this is what, there's, what it, the chorus is. The end is where we begin. It's crawling back when we run away, run away. Because the end is where we begin, where broken hearts mend and start to beat again. The end is where we begin. And so with this in mind, that's where we're going to start today. We're going to start with the end. Uh, so if you have a Bible, I'd ask that you open it up. Uh, most of you are probably going to turn it on. If you don't have one, don't worry. We're going to have the slide up here and you'll be able to read it. Uh, I hope it'll be big enough for you. But let me recommend if you don't have a Bible and you're looking for something, uh, the Bible app is a great thing that you can use, good for daily devotions and such. Uh, as a church, we actually started a, uh, a group study, so if you wanted to join that, simply look me up as uh, Pastor K. Jewel. Uh, invite me to be your friend, and I'll invite you to, to that group. Uh, the other one that I would also re recommend is Faith Life Bible Study. Uh, this is a book as well that works alongside when we're physically meeting, and that as the screens pop up and the, the things move, um, you can follow along in this app. And so it's a little easier for those who are kind of just getting used to where things are in the Bible. But uh, to th that to say, when I preach, I typically stay in one passage. Um, this topic is, is a little bit more difficult, and so to, it's going to be a variety. So I am going to bounce around a little bit. And as I said, this is why it's important for you to simply follow along. Um, and we'll have everything up there for you. Uh, but this is what Revelation 21, 
one to four states. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The old, uh, for the old, excuse me, for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them. He will be his people. God himself will be with them. And this is the verse I want you to pay close attention to. Is verse 4. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All of these things will be gone forever. Let me pray. Uh, Father God, thank you that we can have a hope that there is a future for those of us who call upon your name. And this hope is that you will take us to a place that was just described so beautifully, a place where no more pain or sorrow. God, all of us need to know that, especially in this time we're all feeling a little nervous. We pray that you be with each and every single one of us as we continue this message. In your son's name, amen. So if you see this in, in verse 4, that you'll wipe away every tear, this is the destination for those of us who call Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Now, it, it seems a little ironic talking about this under these current situations and circumstances, but again, it's this idea that there's hope. There's a reason that we are living, and for those of us who are Christian, we kind of have this idea that this is why we are doing what we're doing. But there's more to life than just our future. There's still more to the here and the now. And so when we're looking at this, why is Jesus considered, or, or with our logo, we've had a crown? Why isn't it something that uh, represents a city or a cloud? Well, because we believe that it's Jesus only. See, that heaven wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Jesus. And I mean that twofold. First, Jesus isn't there. It's not heaven. And we're not getting to heaven unless Jesus comes for us. In the open video that, that we saw, A.B. Simpson, uh, who was the founder of the Christian Missionary Alliance, good Canadian boy, born on PEI, um, but his answer was also part of Scripture. Uh, Matthew twenty four fourteen says this, and the good news, uh, that's the gospel, that's preaching about who Jesus is. The good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations will hear it. And then the end will come. See, this was our, belie our founder's belief. That this was why mi missions was so important. He believed that once every person had heard, or at least every tribe and every tongue had heard about who Jesus Christ is, then Jesus would return. And so if we understand that, then you can see understand why missions becomes important. It brings Jesus sooner, but it also lets everybody know who Jesus Christ is. And so the very reason that you're hearing about Jesus Maybe this is the first time, you know, under the circumstances, you kind of, I'm going to check this church thing, this Jesus thing out. Or maybe it's the millionth time. It's because somebody believed that there was a God in heaven that loved you and died for you. And so now he is doing his best, or we're doing our best, to inform you of that, to give you an opportunity to hear who Jesus is and that know that his hand is outstretched to you, wanting you to come back. And if we didn't, and this wasn't important, then the only people who'd be there is maybe 12, well, 11. But we were given some marching orders as the church. Matthew 28, 18 to 19 says this, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. To the church, this is what we call the Great Commission. Uh, it's the task at hand, and it's pretty obvious. The task is to go. Go to the nations and let them know who Jesus is. And if you would notice, it's go to all nations, not just to the white, to the privileged, to those who have money. Jesus didn't see skin color, nor should we. Go to all nations. Every tribe and every tongue should know who he is. And the beautiful thing is, we believe that there will be a time that all tribe and nation will know. And then we see this in Revelation 7, 9. After this, I saw a vast crowd, too great to count, from every nation and tribe and people and language, standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb, they were clothed in white robes. They held palm branches in their hands. We can't remain quiet. <laughs> See, this is a beautiful picture of everybody coming to worship the Lord, every tongue and tribe. And if we remain quiet, then this doesn't happen. And this is why we believe so strongly that Jesus is coming. And the, why is he coming? To bring us back to all of this that we've just read. To come back and bring us to that. Uh, think of it like this. Say, for instance, you knew that there was a party. Everybody loves a party. But imagine you were informed that not only is the party free, so is all the food, all the drinks. Anybody is invited. Even you. The cost of admission has been paid for. Would you keep quiet if that was the case? Well, that's what we have here. An invite to come. Be a part of all those people worshiping Jesus for eternity. As A.B. Simpson's thought was that if this was place was so marvelous, then shouldn't we let other people know about it? He wanted to make sure the invites got out to all people. He actually even started the Christian Missionary Alliance because he was doing this to people who his church really didn't like. They weren't the up and up. But Simpson saw that they needed Christ. So he left his church and started what became the Missionary Alliance. So for Pathway, how do we do this? How do we get the invite out? Well, one of the reasons or one of the ways is what we're doing right now. We're talking to you. Uh, when we meet physically, one of the things that we've been doing for the last couple of years is called our Meet and greet pancake breakfast. And what this is, is we, we forego our regular service the, the last Sunday of the month. And instead of doing a talk and, and some worship, we just open our doors to the community, have a couple small bounties. We put those up for the kids and, and allow the parents to engage. Uh, under these circumstances, we're not able to have that this month and hopefully we'll be back next month. But it's a beautiful opportunity for people to come and see See, we want to fulfill our mission. And the mission that we believe that God has given us is for a place for you to belong. And so we do things for our kids, we do things for our adults, and we hopefully welcome people, that however they are, that they feel welcome, that they can come and be a part of Pathway. We don't ask that you believe. <laughs> we ask that you feel that you belong. Because we believe that once you understand that you do belong, then you start asking some questions. How is it you can welcome me? Well, the reality is, Jesus welcomed me. And so I want to welcome you. And the rest of our church would do, hopefully do the same thing. Because we believe that once you belong and you understand that you belong, you have to ask some questions that it's because of the love of Jesus. Well, and perhaps you believe. And then as you believe, you get to understand a little bit more. And then maybe you're helping people at the breakfast to belong. And so that's how we do things kind of as a church. But the reality is, is that's a church. You are sitting at home. How do you, how do, you do this at home? Well, this is where we're coming 
to our big passage of scripture this morning. Um, sorry. And uh, we're going to be in 1 Thessalonians 4. We're actually going to read the entire chapter, not all at once. We're going to take it a little bit by bit and look at it two different sections. Um, but this is where we have it. So it says this. Finally, dear brothers and sisters, we urge you in the name of the Lord Jesus to live in a way that pleases God as we have taught you. You live this way already and we encourage you to do so even more. For you remember what we taught you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. God's will is for you to be, a, be holy, so stay away from all sexual sin. Then each of you will control his own body and live in holiness and honor, not in lustful passion like the pagans who do not know his ways. Never harm or cheat a fellow believer in this manner by violating his wife, for the Lord avenges all such sins. As we have solemnly warned you before, God has called us to live holy lives, not impure lives. Therefore, anyone who refuses to live by these rules is not disobeying human teaching, but is rejecting God, who gives his Holy Spirit to you. But we don't need to write to you about the importance of loving each other, for God himself has taught you to love one another. Indeed, you already show your love for all believers throughout Macedonia. Even so, dear brothers and sisters, we urge you to love them even more. Well, first things first, you need to understand that Paul is writing this letter, and if you don't know anything about Paul, he's got a very colorful past. So if you think you've got a colorful past, you need to do a little research, see about this guy who was Saul, then becomes Paul. Incredible story. So he's talking to the church, and when he uses the terms brothers and sisters, who he's talking to is other Christians. So if you know who Jesus is, then what Paul is talking to is for you. This is the standard. These are the things that you can do to be ready for our coming king. Uh, if you don't know Jesus and you're just listening to this, then that's fine. We're glad that you are here. Uh, you're not going to be judged for that. The reality is, Christians have to live to that and should live to that. But we do hope that, as you can see, these are pretty good practices of life, not just to be a Christian, but in anybody. And we hope that at some point, you would understand who Jesus Christ is as Lord and Savior. But as Paul is talking about, we, we see this, this is an idea of sanctification. Paul is talking about working it out, that these are things that we need to do. We are in control of ourselves, and we need to continue to be in, in control of ourselves. And as we continue to work through this, we begin to see his kingdom come. Uh, verse Paul, uh, Paul talks in verses 3 to 8 that uh, some very specific issues to the church uh, but we need to see that sanctification isn't just this internal thing, it's external as well. Uh, and for it to work, we have to be willing to do more than just think. We have to do. Uh, William MacDonald says this, Not only is the believer to have a controlled body, he should also have a heart of love for his brothers in the Lord. Love is the key word of Christianity. In reality, the good news of Jesus Christ does not simply tell us what to believe, but helps us to understand how do we change so that people would see Christ and not see us. Well, if we change behavior and we, we change our thoughts, then the way that we live out life, as Paul says, is pleasing to God. It helps us to show that we're ready we're ready for when Christ returns. It, 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 Christ isn't calling for this uncleanliness. He's calling for holiness. And so that's what we have to try to strive for. But we're not going to do that on our own. And that's what we're talking about sanctification and go back and listen to the video to have a better understanding of that. But we'll see that if we want to walk the talk, we have to do some work. We have to be responsible. And we need to remember that the purpose 
for us as believers is to glorify God and to point others to him. And so therefore, our internal lives have to match our external lives. If we're going to live out the way of our faith, then people have to see that not only do we say something, but we follow it up. We don't want people to think that Christians are nothing but hypocrites. And the first thing we need to do is change our external and internal to make sure they are matching and that we're living a life that God has called us to, not just on Sunday mornings, but always. So Paul continues and he, and he encourages them to understand this is why and where we are going. Uh, we continue on verse 13. And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. For since we have believed that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. We tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. First the believers who have died will rise from the grave. Then, together with them, we who are still alive will remain on the earth, will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. So encourage each other with these words. Now, we don't have time to jump in the how, the what, the, the timing of, of, of all of this in regards to Jesus' resurrection or our resurrection, Jesus' return. Uh, there's lots of books and even movies that have been put out there. Uh, obviously, 2012, that wasn't it. Uh, so sorry. Uh, but I don't know if 2020 is. No, the fact is, nobody does. But what I do want to point out is two things in this thing before we wrap up. And, and the first thing that I want to stress is that there's an answer that we do have hope. Christ will return and take us to that place that we read. No more tears, no more sorrow, no more pain. That is a promise that he is coming back to us. This is why we can say that we have hope. The reality is if as a, as a church or as a believer, as a Christ follower, if you believe that Jesus not only predicted his death, but then he died and then he predicted his resurrection and he pulled it off, then when he says he's coming back, I think you could probably believe those words. And he's promising to bring us back to this wonderful place. This is our coming king. But the other part that I want to point out was in verse 17, that we'll be together with him forever. We're going through a situation. We, we don't know how long this coronavirus thing is going to last. Reality is, it's not going to last forever. There will be an end to it. So we can stay true and believe that there is far more going on to life than just this coronavirus. And as a church, we believe that Jesus is our coming king. And so with that, I want to encourage each of us with these words to know that there is something. There is a hope. There is a future. Well, maybe you've been listening and watching this, and, and I appreciate that you've been here for this time. But if you don't know who Jesus is, in a moment I want to give you an opportunity to pray with me. Wherever you are, it doesn't matter how many people are around, maybe it's just you or social distancing, and so you're by yourself. Nobody's going to know. But I want to pray for you. I want to pray for those of us who, who believe there is a hope, because right now it's hard. It's difficult to, to do this and, and feel like we're by ourselves. But there's a God who loves us, who resides in those of us who call upon his name. And so these steps that were here for the, the believers, if, if that's not where you're at, those aren't your steps. The first step that you can take 
is a step of acceptance. And so I want to pray for all of us. So uh, I know it might seem silly, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to ask everybody who's listening to this, just close your eyes. And then if you would like, you can repeat after me. Uh, you can do it orally or, or just kind of in your head. But let's pray this together. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are God and I am not. I accept that I have missed the mark. I haven't lived the way that I should. And I pray that you would help me to live that way. So I accept you, Lord Jesus, to be who you say you are our Savior, our Sanctifier, our Healer, and our coming King. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, do me a favor. Send me an email, office at pathwaychurchcanada.com, and let me know. I'd love to be able to follow up with you and, and help answer maybe some questions that you might have. But if that isn't something that you've done for the first time, then think about how can you be ready? And actually, that is what this week my questions are for you. Maranatha means the Lord is coming. Are you ready? And then think about it this way. In, in all this different social distancing and isolation, what can you do to complete the task? Well, as I said, I'm glad that you've joined us. We're glad that you found us. Uh, we hope that you'll be back next week. Uh, we're trying to figure all that, to how that works. Uh, but we really hope that you would come back. As I said, follow us on Facebook. We'd like for you to, to hit the like button so that you stay on top of things. Uh, as well as we do have, uh, our, uh, with our YouTube channel, hit subscribe as things go up. Uh, end of the week, we'll try to give you some announcements that you can look for. And then Sunday, 10.30, we will post uh, the service, uh, whether we're going live or what have you. But we want to make sure that you are able to connect with us. So thanks for being with us. And uh, keep your head high. Keep looking. And cheers. <laughs>